Hi, everyone. I realize that this is the last session before the weekend, so I'm trying to, I'll be, I'll be to the point and we'll, we'll move on. BBC Media Action, you're all forgiven if you've never heard of it. Let me just uh, explain briefly and we'll, we'll get to the session. It is the international development arm of the BBC. It's a registered charity, it's an NGO. So what that means is that we're funded by independent uh, independent donors, so the likes of DFID, the EU, uh, USAID, Gates Foundation, that's where our funding comes from and that's who we're accountable to when we're doing projects. We're, we're aiming to deliver change in, in low-income countries. We are very much part of the BBC and we, we're, we're governed by the BBC as well, so that's where we, that's where we sit. Um, we reach around 200 million people. Our audiences are in Africa, Asia, Middle East, Eastern Europe, and a lot of our audiences we reach through the BBC World Service, which you'll be more familiar with. We work in partnership with local media, with governments, with other NGOs, and with technical experts like yourselves as well. Um, so what that means, we've heard a lot of fascinating things and a lot of people grappling with how to reach British audiences, how to talk to them about climate change. I'm sorry, I won't be much help on that front. But what I can do is share what's worked in, in our attempts to shift social and behavior change and really prompt people to take action uh, amongst people who are, are dealing with the, the most acute effects of, of climate change. So moving on, we've heard from other speakers that at this point we know more about risk than ever before. And we're also communicating that, that risk and that science better than ever before. I know you struggle with it, but really if we think back uh, several decades, it's, we're, we're doing fantastic work. Oh, we heard from Owen and also Chris that there are some really exciting attempts to communicate that science better. Yet despite this, people still aren't taking action or the action that we think uh, would help. So that's where I think that a, a lot of us, media, scientists, behavior, behavioral scientists, need to come together and find ways not only to help people understand the risks, but also find some of the solutions and take action to, to put those solutions into practice. I'm going to talk about, um, well, three questions that we should ask ourselves when we are communicating risk. And I'm going to focus on communicating with the general public. And when I talk about communication and, um, and reaching people, I'm not talking about messaging. I think that that's our default uh, position a lot of times. I'm talking about using media as a platform to explore different options, to discuss what's going on, and to ultimately help people make their own decisions. So I'm, I'm thinking about a very dynamic, interactive exchange, not just one directional messaging. Before I get into that first question, let me do a, just a quick reality check about uh, the difference between understanding and action. Has anybody here been to an earthquake zone? Many of you. Raise your hands high so everybody can see. Okay. How many of you had a grab bag? All right, okay. How many of you slept with that grab bag next to your bed? Okay. All right, okay. You all know the information is there, right? You know you need a grab bag. You're smart people. Uh, you didn't do it. You didn't do what you knew was best for you. Let's hear from someone who also lives in an earthquake zone about her relationship with disaster preparedness. Oh, yeah. Hi, I'm Claire. I am born and raised uh, right by San Francisco, California. Regarding how to prepare for an earthquake, I know that you should definitely have water available. You have a backpack full of safety things and things that you would need. Clothes, flashlights, shoes, power bars, socks. Also, I think a hammer in case you're under rubble or whatnot if it's a very catastrophic earthquake. I think I was gifted a backpack by my dad and I think it has earthquake safety things in it. I have no idea. I don't think I've even opened it. Because I've only experienced small rumbles, I, I don't, I'm not terribly scared. Comparing myself to other people, I'm probably just as prepared as they are in that we're all not very prepared. I know not to go outside because power lines might go down or duck under my desk, get under a hard surface. I would never tie my furniture to the wall. 
I think that's ridiculous. We tied our we tied our Christmas tree to the wall once, but I would never think to tie my furniture to the wall. Okay, what's the next slide there? Yeah, so um, Claire again, she's a university student. She she knows what she's doing. She knew exactly what she should have done, and she didn't. And the last thing, if you couldn't understand her, she said she would never tie her furniture to the wall, which is standard practice in some countries, not in California. So. Behavior change is complex, naturally. This has come up before that we can't just provide information and expect people to make, make decisions and take action. We're not rational beings, as we also heard earlier today. We've got to, we, we operate um, with a number of biases in our head. This is one very common bias. If you can't read that, can everybody read that? In the back, yeah. Okay. All right. So, the, you know, he thinks only the good things will happen to him. He's got a terrible chance of winning the lottery, but that's what he thinks might happen. He's got a much better chance of dying of cancer, but he says, "Won't happen to me." It happens to all of us, right? We we always think, we hope that the better outcome will happen. So there are a number of biases. Whether it's around being able to visual, visualize the, the consequence, this varies according to to risk, um, uh, whether we've had experience with it or not. Uh, all of this factors into how we make decisions. And when we set out to influence audiences in one way or another, we need to really understand what people's relationship with risk is. When Media Action does projects, we spend a lot of time understanding the audiences inside and out. Not just what they do, but also what they really think about, what they, what they feel, uh, in addition to their media use. We do that ahead of a lot of projects. One very big research initiative we undertook was in Asia, in trying to understand um, people across seven countries in Asia, now eight, their relationship with climate change. How were they experiencing the effects of climate change? What were they doing? What were their beliefs around climate change? So it's the very personal experience of climate change. That data is open source and it's available on this website where we've got information around, it's under the title resilience. We've also got some categories on governance and media use as well. So that's data you can dig into and, and possibly um, use in your projects. So we spend a lot of time understanding, um, understanding people first. In Bangladesh, for example, we learned that people, where people are really suffering the effects of climate change, not everyone was taking action. Uh, we found that some people didn't take action because they felt it was the responsibility of the government to do things or they felt that they simply couldn't, they were too poor, they had no resources, they needed money, they needed uh, big NGO support to come in and, and do something for them. We also found that some people weren't taking action or certain actions because they thought the neighbors would think they were quite weird. They didn't, they didn't want to be um, the, the, the weird ones out in the neighborhood trying something different, planting something new, changing their house because they would really, really stand out. So understanding all of those things really influenced what we then did as a, a result. So that's the, the next question I think we all need to ask ourselves. Not just, but why aren't people taking action? What would help? Now these questions, again, it's, it's, it's not a formula, it's not an approach for behavior change because that's really complex. These are just the things that, that get overlooked. What would help? This is where being so clear and so precise about what you want to change comes into, into play here. What would help? Often, yes, information and understanding would help, but what else would help? In Bangladesh, given those, um, given those factors that people were saying about taking action, we, we decided, okay, some information about what to do would help, but also how can we really get people to discuss and take on board that perhaps there are some things that they could do? For example, we went to a, a village. We learned that you know, we, we, we talked to people about you know what's important to them, as, as Lucy was saying before. We learned that 
people said, you know, our biggest risk is, uh, is, is not necessarily when the cyclone comes because there's a great shelter just down the road. Our problem is we can't get to it. We, you know, the wind's blowing, everything, the weather's getting really bad, and we've got to somehow get across this series of sticks over a body of water to reach the shelter. Otherwise, we have to walk 45 minutes around, and that's too late. Um, so difficult to navigate sticks, even more difficult if you're carrying a small child or somebody with limited mobility to get over to the shelter. Uh, so we looked at that. And then life, once they got to the shelter, was pretty miserable for the next few days because even though there was a shelter, it was in a state of disrepair and, and water blew in through the windows and made the floor a disgusting mess. So through the program, we then looked uh, not just at some of the solutions to those, but really motivating people to take action with resources that they had readily available within their communities. So in that particular case, uh, we, we talked to people about how to build a bridge with local resources really quickly and really simply. We talked about how to uh, take old bicycle tubes and slit them down in the middle um, sand the window frame and, and glue it in place. So these are things that they were simple, practical, doable actions that people could take uh, to, to make a difference in their, own, in their own situation. Let me just show you a, a short clip from that program so you get a sense of, of what it looks and it sounds like to the audience. এ পর্যন্ত আমরা ঘুরে বেরিয়েছি দেশের নানা প্রান্তে কথা বলেছি সেসব এলাকায় মানুষের সঙ্গে এবং একসাথে জলবায়ু পরিবর্তনজনিত বিভিন্ন সমস্যার সমাধানে পথ খুঁজেছি এবার আমরা এসেছি দেশের দক্ষিণে সমুদ্রের কোল ঘেঁষা বরগুনাতে আমরা এখন আছি বন্দর নগরী চট্টগ্রাম আমরা আছি বাংলাদেশের সর্বোত্তরে কুড়িগ্রামে খুবই কষ্ট করতাম এখন আর এই কষ্ট হবে না সাইক্লোন যদি আবার আসে আসলে ব্রিজটা আমাদের বেশ উপকারে আসবে এই যে ঘর তৈরির এই যে সিস্টেমটা আমাদের কাছে এখন বর্তমান সবচেয়ে নতুন সিস্টেম এর আগে আমরা এই সিস্টেমটা পাইনি এখন এইটা যদি আমাদের জন্য ঝরসহনশীল হয় তাহলে এটা আমাদের জন্য অনেক ভালো Okay, so aside from being quite inspirational and motivational, the, the, the series did a number of things. It, it, beyond providing information, it role modeled people like me taking action. So when I say like me, it's very important that media reflects the people that, that your, your audience. Um, it, it normalized taking action, not just by a few individuals doing it, but by whole communities coming together um, to overcome that idea of, of a bit of stigma with the neighbors. It also really empowered people, people who otherwise felt that really they needed somebody else's help to come along. It, it, really empowered them that they could use the resources to hand to at least make a, a, a degree of difference. And it also shared local solutions at scale, because even though we were, we were looking at the 
micro problems of a particular community, sometimes those could be adapted by places down the road, so we would find neat ideas happening and, and broadcast those to millions of people. This show reached 22.5 million people, where 90% of the population in Bangladesh has a television. Uh, remarkably, you can drive hours into the into the nothingness, wilderness, and you'll see solar panels on top of houses that otherwise aren't connected. So people really do have have television and are watching this. So uh, also the impact figures you saw at the end. Again, this is what we're held accountable to. I don't know what you think about 36.5 people taking action. That was our midline. It then went up to about 47% by the by the end line. It might not sound impressive to you, but media for behavior change projects are typically around 10 percent, something like this. So this actually had a, a really surprisingly positive impact. All right, last question is, how can you engage people? And I know that's the magical question. You're struggling with climate change. People have been trying to engage people on this topic for, for years. But when I say engage, I'm, I'm not talking about just capturing eyeballs. I'm talking about really um, getting people talking about the issue connecting with them on their agenda, not your agenda. So it's so important, I think, to, to remember um, what we heard from Megan earlier. People have their own lives to live. They've got their own issues. We need to find a way to enter. If they're worried about money, let's talk about money. If they're worried about their pets, let's talk about pets, which a certain organization did very well in, uh, in Latin America in terms of disaster preparedness. People were ignoring evacuation orders because they were going back in to rescue their pets. So this organization said, right, make a disaster plan for your pet. Uh, who, who care? You, they, they're not going to say ignore your, just run. People wouldn't hear for that. So, so finding a way to enter the conversation and what matters to your audience, not to you, I think is a, is, is a good trick. Um, using emotions, obviously we know as well, uh, things around inspiration, fear. I, I'm not going to say use a positive or a negative approach, as somebody else said, different things work uh, for different risks and different audiences. But discussion really e can be a precursor to action. So finding a way to spark that conversation at a household level and also a, a community level and a governance level is critical. So at the governance level, media can host those discussions at scale. Um, this here is our, our, we run a governance program in Nepal called Saja Sawal, which means common questions. And the program positions, similar to question time, positions regular people uh, with high level decision makers, literally face to face, which is empowering for a lot of communities who feel that they, they simply don't have the right or the ability to ask questions. And the, the program travels around the country to make sure that the voices of people who are in the most remote areas like this do have that opportunity to, to ask questions uh, about climate change, uh, about anything else that's important to them. So hosting this, and you'll see this woman up here, hosting those conversations can really help all audiences feel that in one way or another they can participate in that conversation. That's a quite serious approach to conversation. It's also quite important to think about households and, uh, and how to get people talking. If you're making media, using media, what you want is not for people to turn it off and go to dinner. You want people to keep talking about it. So that's where a bit of fun comes in. You've got to be entertaining, entertaining with a purpose. So creativity for creativity's sake uh, won't get too far, but creativity with, with an end goal about what kind of a change you want to see happen will, will help. I'm going to show you a, another short clip, which I think does that very well, and then we'll close. Jay, what are you wearing? You can't go to church like that. Well, that settles it. I'm going golfing. You're going to miss church again? Last Sunday, you said that you had to go to the office. The week before, you had breakfast with a friend. Are you going to go to church next week? We'll see. I know what we'll see means. If you're done with church, just say it. I'm done with church. Just say that! Look, I'm not going to church anymore. It's not the end of the world. Let's not make a big deal out of it. Oh, 
No, we're gonna die! We're gonna die! Better not. If, if they find us in these outfits, it's gonna be very bad for the games. Oh, oh. Claire! We're okay! Dad! Luke! Buddy! You okay? That thing almost fell on me. I was sitting there and it came this close to my head. It's all right. You're okay. You didn't get hurt. I know, Melfi, you're alive! Yeah, of course I'm alive. For now, for months, Claire has been after me and dogging me. Anchor the cabinet to the wall. What if we have an earthquake? We've got kids in the house, blah, blah, blah. So it finally reached the point where I had no choice but to just roll up my sleeves and tell her I did it. <laughs> okay, so please put aside all the stereotypes about gender, sexuality, Latinos and ethnicity. Media does a lot of things. It's not always good, but we're talking about risk reduction for the moment. So why I like this clip is that, again, it's, it's normalizing preparedness. Nobody in that clip was saying, should we anchor the bookshelf to the wall? It was a question of when. And what happens after this is he leaves his, lo his wife locked in the bathroom until he attaches to the cabinet to the wall so he doesn't get in trouble when, <laughs> when she comes out. So, I, I mean, I think this is a great example. I mean, think about the dullest possible action that you want your audiences to take. Nail the bookshelf to the wall. Who on earth? How on earth? They made 30 minutes of entertaining television around nailing a bookshelf to the wall. So th I, mean, that, I think it's, it's incredible. They also weaved in uh, fatalism in there, right? I mean, did the earthquake happen because he didn't go to church or not? It's a discussion topic. It doesn't really matter. The media is not there to tell people whether it was God's role or not, but it prompts a conversation, and it's that conversation that can really help people find the, the, th their own decisions and, and what they want to do. So just to close, it's all about ultimately taking action. And putting the audiences aside for the moment, I think we need to look at ourselves as practitioners. We've got a lot of interesting people in the room, me from media, from science, from behavioral science, from psychology, from NGOs, from civil society. I think that the action that we need to take is finding ways of working together to do this better, because none of this media would have been made or made as well if only one of those entities were doing it. So it's a real combination of, of creativity, of careful planning, of strong theories of change, and ultimately technical science that will inform people's decisions and make that change we want to see. So let's go forth and do it. Thank you.